There's this website called the Stella Awards, where between 2002 and 2007, a man named Randy Cassingham compiled a list of frivolous lawsuits. Ooh. It's inspired by the case of Liebeck versus McDonald's restaurants, in which Stella Liebeck burned herself with a McDonald's coffee, which were really cheap back then. Like, gee, no wonder people liked the 90s. This case forever cemented Stella into legal infamy. This case was like the 90s equivalent of a messy beauty guru scandal. It was just like... You know? So, what was Stella Liebeck's full story? According to news media at the time, I'm so pale. Stella Liebeck was an evil, stupid, careless 79-year-old woman from Albuquerque, New Mexico, hell-bent on bringing down the bourgeoisie. On February 27th, 1992, she bought a cup of coffee at McDonald's. <laughs> the first step to her heinous master plan. The next step was to make everyone think she was driving home when in fact, she would go to her car and spill coffee on herself. Whoa, shit. She would then sue McDonald's for negligence. The world was on fire. With hatred, not actual fire. What negligence was McDonald's being sued for? Coffee is supposed to be hot. What a goof. Stella Liebeck would miraculously win the case, to the dismay of the people, and win millions of dollars. This began a whirlwind of frivolous lawsuits that lubricated the rusty wheels of law professors across the country for decades to come. Stella died in 2004, but not before the public, and Randy Cassingham damned her reputation to hell as a stupid idiot who didn't know how to drink coffee. It's a good thing hindsight is 2020 because boy was the public wrong. Especially Randy Cassingham. <laughs> Imagine being so petty you name a whole website after this poor lady. <laughs> but then again, I guess I'm petty too, so let's just move on. Stella Liebeck was indeed a 79-year-old woman who did indeed buy a coffee and did indeed spill it on herself inside of a car and did indeed sue McDonald's, but many more details were left out. Stella bought a cup of coffee from McDonald's on February 27th, 1992. So she buys this coffee, right? And she goes to her car, and this is where everyone in the audience is like, You stupid idiot, you shouldn't drive with hot coffee. And you're right, you shouldn't drive with hot coffee. And she didn't either. She was the passenger. Her grandson was in the driver's seat. And he wasn't even driving when it all went down. Stella was putting more cream and sugar in her coffee when... BAM! She spilled. That's your mouth! Ooh, that was good! No, no, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. Let me see it. Let I me didn't mean to do that. No, I really- I thought the witch would melt. At this point, you're probably thinking, You stupid idiot, I spill hot water on myself all the time, and I don't sue my microwave. Well, this particular coffee was so hot, hotter than- <laughs> so hot that it caused these graphic burns on Stella. It caused third-degree burns, the really bad ones, over 6% of her body. Double majoring is hard enough. She remained in the hospital for over a week to get surgery for skin grafting. So, at what point did McDonald's become involved in this? They serve lots of people their coffee, right? Well, here's the hot, spicy, lawsuit-inducing tea. Coffee. Stella did not want to go to court, and was seeking to settle purely for her medical bills, which amounted to about $13,000, and her daughters lost wages for looking after her, which was about $5,000. This put the settlement at a little under $20,000. Doesn't seem super unreasonable, right? Well, it was to McDonald's, who subsequently offered... Chill. Okay. $800. Stella eventually hired a lawyer who accused McDonald's of gross negligence. And that's where the whole shebang really begins. See, at this point it was discovered that McDonald's served their coffee at temperatures between 180 and 190 degrees. McDonald's argued that this was the industry standard temperature for coffee and that this temperature was determined to be the best for commuters so that the coffee would still be warm by the time they arrived at their destination. Um, 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 um. 
Others say that this high temperature is required to brew the flavor correctly from coffee. The thing about those arguments is that they leave out crucial information. For example, yes, coffee is brewed at temperatures between 180 and sometimes even 200 degrees, but it is almost never served at that temperature. Depending on which website you source, you will get temperatures between 140 and 170 degrees. The National Coffee Association of the USA itself recommends 140 degrees for serving coffee. On top of this, McDonald's stated that this temperature was normal for the sake of the convenience of their commuters. But what they didn't mention was the 700 other reports they had received on burning coffee. Okay. Or, let me rephrase that. They did mention the 700 reports, but they also emphasized how they weren't going to do anything about it. As Christopher Appleton, quality assurance executive, said in his testimony, there are more serious dangers in restaurants. So, how did this woman end up getting $3 million, you may ask yourself. As terrible as this was, it couldn't be worth $3 million. Personally, I don't mind anyone bringing down the diarrhea factory that is McDonald's, but either way, Stella did not get the money. Here's what really happened. So, courts split awards into two categories, punitive and compensatory. Compensatory damages are basically what they sound like, money given to the plaintiff to compensate for the damages she had to suffer. The jury awarded her compensatory damages in the amount of $200,000, but they still found her 20% guilty of being stupid, so they reduced her total by 20%. Next is punitive damages, which is money given to the plaintiff in order to punish the defendant for bad behavior. Here's where it gets wild. The jury decided it would be fair to award Stella two days' worth of McDonald's coffee revenue, a drop in the bucket for McDonald's. Apparently, two days' worth of McDonald's coffee revenue amounted to $2.7 million. However, the judge reduced this amount to $480,000, deciding that three times the compensatory damages would be more than fair. This totaled up to a little over $600,000. Both Stella and McDonald's appealed this decision, obviously for different reasons. They eventually settled out of court for a rumored amount that was even less than what the judge offered. <sighs> Poor Stella. So how did this become such a large national controversy? As you can imagine, there were a lot of moving parts to the case, and as the story traveled from paper to paper, the details became more and more sparse until it was just a moving headline, stupid lady spills coffee on herself and gets $3 million. It became an almost shamefully easy punchline to work with, making its way through all the media hemispheres of the 90s. We got a chance? <laughs> Do we have a chance? You get me one coffee drinker on that jury, you gonna walk out of there a rich man. <laughs> Now she claims she broke her nose on the sneeze guard at the sizzler, bending over, looking at the chickpeas. Man, it's hot. How hot is it? It's so hot, I poured McDonald's coffee in my lap to cool off. I mean, it's not like the McDonald's person leaned over the car and poured it. It was an accident. Ooh, my coffee was too hot. It's coffee! <laughs> but besides the fact that the world decided to basically make a giant joke out of a poor 79-year-old woman, there was one other reason this case became very important. <laughs> As mentioned before, by the time the media was through with Stella Liebeck, her reputation was ruined. Third degree burns and all, people still ended up on McDonald's side. People love McDonald's. I don't get it. I honestly don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I need to rant for a second. Like, I know it's cheap and accessible and stuff. But like, I don't see the appeal at all. Honestly, like, if hell is real and I end up going there, my hell is just going to be me at McDonald's, and Satan is going to be the cashier, and he's going to tell me that the only thing I can eat for the rest of my life is a double quarter pounder with cheese, and I won't be able to die of hypertension because I'm already in hell. That's how much I don't get McDonald's. It's honestly a recurring nightmare of mine. But back to the education. So the big hullabaloo came over the fact that many viewed this as an example of frivolous litigation, a case where the lawsuit should have little chance of being recognized or won due to the absurd and futile justifications for their claim. Lest we forget, it was never meant to turn into a lawsuit. Instead of resolving it quietly, McDonald's let the media circus get louder and louder. Essentially, McDonald's was giving the world permission to call this lawsuit absurd. 
Years into the future, this case would continue to be studied as an example of the case in the center of the debate for tort reform. A tort is uh, a pastry, as far as I know. It's also some type of funding that the federal government has done uh, for bailout money, I believe. Oh, I thought that was tort. No, I think it's tort. I um, have no idea what a tort is. A tort is a piece of... It's a, I think a tort is a piece of bread that looks like a hoagie roll, but isn't a hoagie roll. So a tort is a harm. It's, it's a, when someone uh, commits a tort, they have harmed you in some way. Tort reform, AKA, should there be stricter regulations on damages victims can receive through the justice system? This question opens up a whole fiery red hot $2.7 million bag of worms, but that's never stopped people from debating it. So is tort reform good or bad? Well, it depends. If you frame it through the view of, we need less stupid ladies spilling coffee on themselves and robbing our hardworking American corporations of $3 million, then you probably would view tort reform as a good thing. Tort reform advocates also argue for a change in support of the current health care system, as implementing a tort system raises the cost of health care, especially in countries without universal health care. While an admirable point of view, tort reform is actually much more complex in its effects on American consumers and corporate welfare. For starters, tort reform leads to a reduction in business liability depending on the event that occurred. In a system where there are caps on damage rewards, it could be cheaper for many larger businesses to pay a capped amount rather than to fix the problem at hand. For example, McDonald's was making $1.35 million a day in coffee revenue with their system at the time, meaning it was not worth their time or their money to make any changes to any long-standing system after settling for less than $600,000. A system that doesn't lend itself to improvements for their consumer can also lead to more harm and injuries to said consumer in a system that can still make profit off of these events. But it doesn't stop there. Tort reform prolongs the amount of time a case spends in the legal system, encouraging the claimant to pursue other means of resolution. This is harmful in situations such as Stella Liebex, where the damage money is needed for immediate cost obligations such as medical bills. To wrap all that up, tort reform is a hotly contested debate. Advocates for tort reform have interest aligning with healthcare reform and improved effects on the greater economy overall, while advocates against tort reform have interests that align with consumer advocacy and corporate liability. Most people don't know this about Stella Liebeck's case. They don't know that while it made for a disgustingly easy Jay Leno punchline, <coughs> it was also an important talking point for the debate on healthcare and the justice system. But what's even more important about this case was the lives that were affected by it. Stella died 10 years after the verdict, at the age of 91, with her daughter stating that she had no quality of life, the settlement money used to pay for a live-in nurse. Stella was done dirty by the system, and the media, and the public, and Randy Cassingham. We talk about cancel culture in reference to where we are in modern times, but boy did the world cancel Stella Liebeck, and she did not deserve it. All she wanted was some coffee. <laughs>